Hello, in this video we're going to derive the mean and the variance of a geometric distribution. And this is part of a playlist that I have called Mean, Variance, Moments, Mode of Distributions. And there's almost 80 videos in there of different distributions. It's actually a pretty nice little playlist. But for this, we're going to look at the geometric distribution. And there's really two ways to think about the geometric distribution, and they're both correct. But their, their differences are subtle. So in the first example, we're going to look at how many trials needed to get one success. And so it's supported on the set x equal 1, 2, 3 to infinity. right? We could get a success on the first trial, or the second, or the third, or the, we don't know. But that's the way to think about it, how many trials until the first success. Now the second and equally valid way to think about it is the number of failures before the first success. And that's supported on the set x equals 0, 1, 2, 3 to infinity, right? If we get a success on the first trial, then we have zero failures. If we have a success on the second trial, we, we have z one failure. Anyway, just two different ways to think about a geometric distribution. <clears throat> In both cases, we, we define p equal the probability of success the probability of failure is 1 minus p and, and often denoted by q. I don't think we use q in this video, but uh, most people do. So the geometric distribution, and we're going to use one above. It's a random variable x that follows a geometric distribution with parameter p and has density f given by this. f of x is equal to 1 minus p raised to the x minus 1 times p. <coughs> P, of course, is between 0 and 1, and the domain is all positive integers. Now, first, we always like to prove that it is a density, and here it's a density of the discrete type. Uh, some call it a probability mass function. So, the geomet theorem 1, the geometric distribution is a density, so it's proven. So, we just sum f of x over all possible values. So, from 1 to infinity, this is f of x. Now, the P is not part of the index, so it can come out. And then this is a geometric series, and it has a definite limit. Now, some would like to redefine it, you know, let Y equal X minus 1, and then it goes, Y goes from one, 0 to infinity of 1 minus P to the Y. Either way, this is the limit. The P is out front, and, it, and the bottom denominator is P, 1 minus 1 plus p, p over p is 1. So it is a density. The mean <coughs> the, uh, of x, so the let x be a geometric random variable with parameter p, the mean of x is given by uh, 1 over p. Now, before we start this derivation, I've, we're going to use a derivation that I derived in alternative formula for the expected value. And it's the second part, ha half of this video, where we do the discrete random variable. <coughs> And it's, a, it's an amazing trick to have in your tool bag. And it's not obvious at first why it works. But after you see this video, you'll go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And the step that we use it in this video is you instantly know it's correct. So let's look at the expected value of x, which is x times f summed over all possible values from 1 to infinity. Now, it's this step here going from this infinite sum to the sum of infinite sum. So x goes from 1 to infinity of f of x, x equal 2 to infinity of f of x. <clears throat> it almost seems like magic, but after you watch this video, you go, oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. Instantly know it. <clears throat> now let's plug in f of x, what it is. It's this. I go ahead and bring the p out front because it's not part of the index, and we do that for each of these infinite sums. Now, I re-index it here because a lot of people like to do that. You don't have to. I'm going to let y equal x minus 1. And then each of these infinite series, go. this one goes from 0 to infinity. This is 1 to infinity, 2 to infinity. So each of these geometric series has definite limits. And the limits, all of them will be multiplied by p, so don't forget that. This first one is 1 over 1 minus, and then whatever this is, which is 1 minus p. 
and then of course that P is multiplied in. Since we started the second term, it goes in the numerator. So it's 1 minus P, 1 minus, 1 minus P, and then don't forget the P out front. And the same way here, we start the second term, so there's a squared component in it. Well, the denominator to each of these is P, and that cancels with the P in, in the numerator. And then we're left with this geometric series, and it has a definite limit of 1 over 1 minus 1 minus P, which is 1 over P. And so it is the mean. It's correct. <clears throat> now, to find the variance, it's actually pretty tricky. And we need some preliminary results to make it easier, to, you know, the, in the derivation. So let's let X be a geometric random variable, and X you know, is uh, the domain is all positive integers. And let's find f of x given that x is greater than 1. Well, it, that is the intersection of x and x greater than 1 divided by this marginal of probability of x greater than 1. But this numerator, this intersection, is just the probability of x, but we had to restrict the domain to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 right because it has to be greater than one the denominator carries over let's plug in what we have this is the geometric distribution probably we're greater than one is one minus p you know the probability one minus the probability that we equal one you know, which is p this goes into the numerator and this is it and it's on the support is the domain is two three four etc and we're not going to do it in this video, but if you just re-index it or uh, let y equal x minus 1, this is a geometric distribution. And if you think deeply about what the meaning of this is, we've had one trial and it's a failure. And now it's like starting over. Now, now if you think about it starting over, it's another geometric distribution. Anyway, that's what it is. I'm not going to go into that much. So the expected value of x minus 1 quantity squared, given that x is greater than 1, well, that says we take x minus 1 squared times the density, summed over all possible values. Plug in the density. <clears throat> Let's let y equal x minus 1, and then it becomes this series. But y is an index, right? So we could put w there or, or z or we could re-index it as x. Well, if you re-index it as x, that, that's actually the same as the expected value of x squared. So these two quantities are equal. Similarly, the expected value of x minus 1 given that x is greater than 1 is just the expected value of x. You can kind of go through the same logic here. Now this one is the, uh, the crucial steps. <clears throat> Let x squared equal this and it's by the law of total expectation and you can look that up and then this step will just make perfect sense but it's the expected value of x squared given x equals one times probability of x equals one expected value of x squared given x greater one times probability of x greater one let's start plugging in what we know since x has to equal one x squared is one expected value of one is one Probably x equals 1 is just p. That's how we defined it. Now, I'm going to do the second part here first. Probably the x greater than 1 is 1 minus p. Now, this part here, the conditional expectation of x, x squared, we're going to rewrite x squared in a unique way. We're going to write it as x minus 1 quantity squared plus 2x minus 1 plus 1. So this is x squared when you multiply it out. But now, since expectation is a linear operator, it goes into both of those, or all three of these terms. But we have to keep the conditional aspect on each of those. So this is the expected value of x minus 1 squared, given that x is greater than 1. And up above, we, we said that was just the expected value of x squared. And then expected value of 2 times x minus 1. That's 2 times expected value of x, right? We, we said that here. Expected value of 1 is just 1. Now, expected value of x is 1 over p, so multiply that in. 
Now you can multiply this all out, take the x squared to the other side, and then solve for x squared, and you get 2 minus p over p squared. And that's it. That's the expected value of x squared. Now let x be a geometric, theorem 3, let x be a geometric random variable with parameter p. The variance of x is given by 1 minus p over p squared. Now this becomes easy because we've already done the hard work. The variance of x is expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x quantity squared. Plug in the values that we derived and it's 1 minus p over p squared and that's it. All right, well that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, bye.